on this video here we have a 4x3 PVC toilet flange which has been broken uh, due to years of use and the floor possibly being on uh, level uh, what we're doing here right now is we're sticking a rag down into the uh, pipe the waste pipe so that when we start to uh, chip pieces off of the uh, flange to get it ready to install the new one the uh, pieces of PVC that we break off will not go down into the uh, sewer system and we're just taking the hammer just to uh, get the uh, toilet flange totally loose now we're going to shove the rag down a little deeper to make it easier to uh, get to the uh, toilet flange and what we're doing here is we're going to cut a little slot out so that it'll make it easier for us to uh, chip the uh, remaining of the uh, toilet flange out of here and notice when we go to cut we're not going to cut too deep uh, start to chip the PVC pieces off of the pipe itself we're going to um, it'll make it a lot easier and right here we're using a screwdriver you can use a uh, chisel if you like but in a lot of cases some people uh, we do have screwdrivers that are easier to get to than a uh, chisel especially especially when you're in the middle of a job you notice how the uh, PVC breaks out easily you would think after years of being glued that uh, this wouldn't be possible but it is doing is when we go to chisel is we're finding the uh, right at the seam where the uh, fitting of the 4x3 flange is glued to the pipe and we're just wedging it right down between the seams and starting to pull the uh, flange away from the uh, PVC pipe and when I say 4x3 PVC toilet flange that means that the uh, this to particular toilet flange can go inside a four inch pipe or on the outside of a three inch pipe and of course this here in the floor this PVC pipe here is four inch and if you were to uh, find one that is a three inch pipe and the uh, flange is going to the outside you can use this same procedure but you will have to probably more than most likely chip out some of the uh, cement around it to uh, get access down about three inches And the video, video that you're seeing to the uh, right side of you, that's the uh, video that is uh, up next. If you uh, want to click the uh, next button, and you can go to that video, which is uh, showing you how to uh, repair a uh, floor up under a toilet, a rotten floor, wood floor that's uh, been damaged uh, of years of leaking okay now we're getting
pretty close to uh, removing most of the uh, chips that are on the side of the pipe. And we're going to continue to leave the rag down in there until we're, uh, we are done with the process of replacing the flames. Here we are, a 3 by 4 flush fit toilet flange. So when you do go to uh, replace this flange, remember to ask for a flush fit 4x3. And of course here we're priming the uh, pipe. And the primer is going to start heating the pipe up and cleaning it so that when we do apply the glue and the combination of the primer and glue kind of just uh, helps it adhesive together and fuse together real nice and strong so that have a nice tight seal and it won't come out on you. In most cases when you do a uh, flange like this and you glue it down like we're doing here you might want to leave it, leave it and let it uh, let it cure for about uh, two or three hours before you actually set the toilet in place. As you can see this flange fit nicely. Thank you. First things first, let's uh, cut the water to the uh, toilet off.
not going to run into a spot on that, but uh, it's hard to take off. And here, what we're going to do, rather than, uh, it, just as in cases where you have a uh, toilet and your toilet bolts are rusted out and you really can't get it out, the easiest way to do it is just break the toilet right there, right there where the uh, bolts are holding it down. And it should come right up. And then we'll worry about the bolts. out of there. And we're going to clean up this uh, little spot right here. Uh, the flange is also broke and we're going to uh, replace the flange also. This is an old cast iron flange and cast iron pipe. with the uh, lead and oakum. This uh, cast iron pipe has been put in with uh, lead and oakum, the flange. But we're going to use a new technique when we go to uh, install the new cast iron flange. Uh, melting lead and oakum is not required to what, uh, for what we're going to do. Finish getting the rest of this floor out of here. Off. Now it's time to start pulling this floor up, and this floor is, this floor is pretty shot, so it's going to come up in pieces. It's not going to be one flush piece. It's going to, as you can see, this is due to years of uh, moisture buildup on the floor.
weak side of the player so we can just uh, take the flange out of pieces. And what we have here is a uh, side angle grinder and we have a uh, diamond blade on it. It rips right through uh, cast iron. Any hard substance. Okay, now you see that we uh we have the uh, we have it cut. We have the, you can probably see the little slits in the side. And what, and what we're going to do here is we're going to take our uh, pry bar or whatever we have and we're going to wedge it between the uh, cracks and just kind of pry it loose. See how it comes right in half? And we're just going to take that old flange off of there. You can see the uh, old lead. Of course, this is a bottom view of the uh, floor that we're replacing and the uh, toilet collar. That's what it's called. And here we're we're just going to add a few. Uh, this is pretty thick floor. Uh, it's been repaired through the years, and they've got like two inches of floor. So here is a uh, about a uh, three-quarter inch piece of wood, and we're going to take. A uh, piece of plywood that we've uh, cut to fit in the spot. This here is a uh, a repair flange. This is a cast iron repair flange. You notice the uh, rubber in the middle. Uh, this is what is going to uh, seal the uh, pipe and the flange from any leaks from up under the toilet or whenever the toilet is flushed. And it should just fit right over the pipe. And if it doesn't, just pull it back up and kind of uh, adjust the screws where it opens up and you can get it in there. Now, one of the only things left to do is bolts so that it will compress the uh, rubber ring together causing a nice tight seal and of course before setting the top it will pipe out pretty good and screw the uh, flange down to the uh, floor on this project we're going to uh, replace the uh, toilet flange. This is what you might see if you were down in the basement. Um, now we're upstairs and this is the repair flange that I have here. You see the uh, black rubber seal um, and now you see the uh, bolts that require an allen wrench and once you start squeezing down the bolts the uh, black rubber will start to expand and this will cause the uh, flange to uh, seal tightly into the uh, old pipe and what we're doing here is we're lining the uh, closet bolt holes where the uh, closet bolts are going to be we're lining them up at each side it should be anywhere from 12 to 13 inches off the uh, to the center of the pipe and this is exactly where the uh, 
toilet boats are going to go to bolt the toilet down. You see we're trying to square it up. And once we have it square to where we want it, then we're going to uh, grab our Allen wrench set and slowly start tightening the bolts uh, going back and forth until we get it uh, to where we want it we don't want to just tighten one bolt straight down we want to just kind of work it around kind of slowly work it around so that we will have a uh, even tightness all the way around And you notice, I don't know if you can see it, but when we tighten down on the bolts, the uh, there's a piece inside that's steadily coming up and causing the uh, black rubber piece to expand outward. And once this is in place, you won't be able to pull this up. You can see now we're trying to pull it up and it's not coming up. And it's sealed tight. And now you have your new flange down on the toilet and the next thing we want to do is take our screws and screw it down Well, you can see how unlevel the uh, floor is. We're going to remove this toilet and we're going to use some plaster Paris to level the floor off so that when we set the toilet back, the uh, toilet will be nice level steady and straight. First we're going to cut the water to the toilet off. And what I like to do is take a plunger and just plunge the remaining water in the tank out in the uh, bowl itself. Now let's disconnect the uh, supply line to the toilet tank usually I like to put a, a small bowl or a towel up underneath to catch the uh, excess water that comes off after removing the supply line now let's uh, remove the uh, closet bolts so that we can lift the toilet and put it to the side Well, now you can see how uh, unlevel the floor is. Uh, it looks as though someone has tried to uh, make repairs before. And what I like to do is I like to uh, leave the uh, existing wax on there and just put a whole new wax ring right on top of there. Just, uh, it's always good to have just a 
a little more wax. I mean, it's not hurting anything. Just put it on there and get a nice seal on the toilet. Now, let's start with our shims and start leveling the floor off. And with the shims, we're going to fill all the voids, all the low spots of the floor. And once we have the shims in place, that's when we're going to mix our plaster Paris and just kind of place the par plaster Paris around it so that uh, we can start leveling this floor off. Now, I usually carry a plastic container around in my truck to uh, mix plaster Paris in. So if you have something like this, this is, this is fine. And yes, that's the uh, plaster Paris. And you can find it in uh, most hardware stores. Now when you mix plaster pairs, all you're going to use is water and you're just going to mix it just as if you would mix a cake mix or a cement mix. You're just going to keep mixing it till you get the right consistency. Not too watery, not too thick. The biggest problem with mixing it not too thick, I mean mixing it thick is that uh, it will dry fast and you want to give yourself a little time to uh, set this tall in place before it dries too fast. Now one of the things you can't see right now is that I am running the uh, water in the face bowl. Now if you're close to the uh, tub, that's another place you can run the water. And as I'm mixing the plaster pairs, I just continuously let the uh, water in the face bowl or tub just run so that uh, after my mixing I can wash my hands and the uh, excess plaster Paris is just washed down the drain and just keep the water running so it don't clog it up just until it dilutes and flushes it all away. Now remember, if you mix this too watery, it's going to run everywhere. And it's not going to do you any good. So now we have just about the right consistency that we want. And we can start placing it over the uh, shims. And filling all the voids, all the low spots of the uh, floor. And another thing, this uh, plaster parish, you won't have to worry about it sticking to the toilet. If the uh, toilet needs to be relifted in the uh, future, uh, the toilet will come right up and the plaster parish will stay right in place. So, sticking to the toilet won't be a problem.
And another thing. Make sure that you have a uh, nice big sponge set to the side, ready to go. And what we're going to do with the sponge is we're going to soak the sponge with water and we're going to start wiping around the toilet. You'll see here in, uh, in a little bit when we uh, reset the toilet. Don't worry about putting too much plaster Paris down there because we're going to uh, we're going to wipe the excess plaster Paris away anyway. Now we set our toilet in place. And we just kind of Push it down right on top of the plaster of Paris and the wax, wax ring. Now we have the toilet where we want. We just take our hand and start pushing the plaster of Paris up into the uh, any void that you might see up under the toilet. We're going to fill all these voids so we have a nice tight seal and a nice flush fit and as we're doing this we have the sponge to the side make sure that we spoke soak the sponge real good purpose for the sponges so that we can get a nice smooth and clean finish See, we take the sponge the and the water, and we start flushing the excess away and wiping it up in the sponge. Then we just continuously rinse the sponge out back and forth until we get to the uh, point where we get, to get our nice smooth finish. Now, each time we uh, come back with the sponge, we start using less and less water. until close to the last wipe and we want the sponge kind of dry so we can wipe up the uh, film and the excess of the plaster Paris around the towel and the toilet.
Okay, what we have here is an older, well, it's a PVC 4x3 closet flange, and you can see that it wasn't really holding anything, and this was making the toilet wobble. Now, this is a difficult spot, uh, and it's going to require a difficult flange. Well, a flange that's going to make this easier. Here is a 4x3 flange with an 8 inch extension that's more than enough to reach down and grab onto the other parts of the PVC once we primer and glue it together. Now we have it glued, primered, in position and you can see down there how far the extension goes and we have a nice solid connection. Now from here we can go ahead. Hello everyone this is a uh, another toilet flange repair similar to uh, one of the other ones I did the uh, PVC flange repair trick um, but this one is the what makes this different is we're gonna use something to uh, extend our flange deep down into the ground because this uh, pipe has been cut way too low before the, below the floor so we need to reach that pipe and so we're going to add a extension um, you can normally you can go out and buy a flange that has an extra long extension but uh, they're really hard to find um, so I'm going to show you we're going to make our own extension here with uh, 3 inch PVC coupling and a little bit of 3 inch pipe and we're going to make this reach down in there and make the shaft of the flange much longer so that we don't have to worry about it. This is the saw that I'm using. Uh, this is a PVC saw. It helps make nice straight cuts. Anyway, let's get started and let's see what's going on. Okay, what we're doing here now is we're going to uh, cut two notches into the uh, toilet flange right here at the top. Um, we want to cut it close enough so that we really don't cut too deep into the uh, four inch pipe that the uh, flange is sitting in and once we cut these two notches out um, it'll make it easy for us to uh, take a screwdriver a large screwdriver and just wedge between the uh, two pieces of plastic and wedge them apart and makes what will make this tr uh, toilet flange really easy to uh, just pull up out of here even though it's been glued for some years, uh, it, this glue uh, can be wedged apart uh, using the process that we're using right now. And once this flange is pulled up, um, you'll see that this flange actually was not really down deep into the uh, four inch pipe, um, which, I mean, it looks bad enough now, but it would have been a more serious issue later once this pipe would have just came right, right up out the ground. And this is why we're gonna use the uh, extension that we're gonna make. Right here, you see me wedging this piece out and obviously you can see by looking at it once this piece is wedged out it makes it easy to um, make room and just wedge the uh, flange right out of here and if you look close you can see that the uh, top of the four inch pipe coming up from the ground is just shy a few inches and it don't it's not a good uh, connection to begin with Yeah, see that came up uh, a little too easy. You can see how deep the uh, four inch PVC pipe is down into the uh, ground, which is too deep. But that's okay, cause we're going to um, we're going to make something work. We're going to add extension. We're going to make the uh, this flange right here. 
Obviously, this flange is too short to actually go down deep enough into the 4-inch PVC. So this is where we're going to make up our own uh, extension. The size of that flange, the outside, is the size that would fit a 3-inch pipe and go inside a 4-inch. So what I'm going to do, it's going to work perfect. By the way, this is a 4 by 3 inch toilet flange, meaning that uh, the ins it will go inside a 4 inch or on the outside of a 3 inch. And here's a 3 inch piece of pipe that we're going to use to uh, make our extension with this 3 inch pipe and 3 inch coupling. And what I'm doing here, I'm just gluing the uh, toilet flange on right now and just kind of size it up to cut just a small piece on. I mean, cut a small piece off so that we can uh, fit the coupling on and it'll be nice and flush with the uh, flange itself. And you see that little knotted piece sitting, sitting right there. We're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, file that off and make it smooth as the side of the uh, coupling itself so that it'll go down the pipe without any issues. Again, this is the uh, PVC saw that I'm using. Uh, of course, mine has been used. <laughs> Uh, this is what we're going to use, and it's going to get us a nice straight cut. By the way, this glue that I'm using, this uh, hot blue glue, oh man, this is uh, this is really good glue. Uh, remember when using this glue, work fast, because it doesn't take long for this to set up. Work fast. Now that we have a coupling on here, we have our 4x3 toilet flange with an extension. And there's that little piece right there that we want to file off to uh, smooth it so we can go push it straight down into the 4-inch. Uh, PVC in the ground. I filed a little bit off, but we're going to file a little bit more off. <coughs> and what I like to do before I, uh, usually before, you know, setting a toilet, uh, is to uh, put my uh, toilet bolts on.
and I like to actually sometimes I end up using two uh, packages of uh, toilet bolts because I like to use the extra bolt to bolt it down to the uh, flange so that when you do go set the toilet the uh, closet bolts are not the toilet bolts are not moving on you and making it hard for you to set the toilet once you see how I have this set you'll uh, you'll like it uh, the way that it's set up for uh, installing a toilet and of course this is a metal ring um, <clears throat> There's always the debate about using a metal ring as opposed to using a PVC plastic ring. Uh, a lot of people are, issues are that the uh, metal ring will rust, and of course that does happen. Uh, especially when you do have issues with the uh, flange to begin with. Um, the uh, PVC flange, the issue that I have with putting that down into the ground at times, uh, especially in a time like this, you don't have time to try to line it up. You have to work fast. And with this uh, metal ring, I can uh, adjust it once it's set any way I want to. Now the toilet bolt's on nice and tight. And we're about ready to and one thing it is a tight fit. It is a tight fit. It's a lot of cases it's not gonna be that easy just to push it down with your hands. You're gonna see that I uh, I'm actually gonna have to step on this to get it down in there. And to make this a little easier, I'll just file the edges off into like a little bevel. Yeah, I'm working on it and of course uh, finish uh, filing down the, uh, the little knot right there that's in the way. And right here I'm beveling the edge of the pipe so that it'll go down into the uh, 4 inch PVC a lot easier because it is a tight fit, very tight fit. And once you see this go in, you know it's not coming out. And no, I'm not using any uh, primer. Because uh, like I said, the pipe that I, I mean the PVC glue that I am using, it's uh, very strong. So we're not going to need any uh, pipe cleaner for this. Now you see how that went in there. That was not. Uh, it was not easy to go with the hand, so I did have to use my feet and put my weight into it. And now this is what I was talking about. The uh, metal flange is easy to adjust, and you can set it anywhere you want because it's movable. Where the uh, plastic flange, you wouldn't have that uh, opportunity to do that. And this is so tight down in there that I have to. Uh, I actually use a screwdriver a little just to kind of get it around to center it. And 
And no, I didn't use any anchor bolts to anchor it down to the ground. Um, because as you can see, uh, there is really nowhere to put it because of the, um, the uh, way that the cement was uh, forming into the uh, hole itself. But this will be down nice and tight. And this is the end. And what I'm doing here is caulking the toilet down. And the caulking is actually moved, used more as a seal to uh, keep water from getting up under the uh, toilet itself when there's any water on the floor, mopping, etc., to keep uh, germs and stuff like that out. And, well, hiding into the crevices of the 